Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors, Wilderness Medicine. If you don't know what we do, we do videos on wilderness medicine, injuries in the outdoors, whether you're hiking, camping, just hanging out at the park. And we also do gear reviews. We talk about a lot of critters on here, and we're, every month we do a giveaway. So this month, at the end of the month, we're giving away a 32-ounce Survive Outdoors Wilderness Medicine water bottle. It's double walled, and I'm telling you, you know, if you know me and you followed my videos, I'm not pulling your chain trying to sell something. I'm giving this away, and it really keeps the drink cold and hot. With that, we're doing also in the giveaway, you're getting gauze pads that are sterile. You're getting some betadine swabs. And you're getting some adaptic bandages for burns, as well as some Xeroform, the petroleum uh Filled dressings and those are for burns. So those are what we're giving away. And in the next video, we will discuss on what are the rules and how you can win that. And then we draw it at the end of the month. All right. So today, what is babesiosis? Babe, babesiosis, as I call it. So this has been around for a while. It is in the Midwest. It is in the upper uh, Northeast. Uh, Connecticut, New York, and it is not a bacteria like Lyme disease. The deer tick, the black-legged deer tick like this, carry, that carries Lyme, can also carry babesiosis. And this is important note, we're going to get come back to this in the middle of the video. About 20 to 28 percent of deer ticks that carry Lyme disease will carry babesiosis. That's really important to note. Man, I got bugs everywhere. So babesiosis is a parasite. And what it does is it basically lyses and basically red blood cells. So it, then it gives you this hemolytic anemia, which is different than an iron deficiency anemia, which we all know and hate, where you're losing blood and you get really weak and fatigued. Hemolytic anemia, you're going to get weak and fatigued but it lyses those red blood cells. And then when they go through the spleen, the spleen just can't make up enough of those red blood cells. Now, if you get babesiosis when you're young and healthy, the vast majority of people, they just get right through it. They, maybe for a few days, they feel like crap and they're good to go. The older you get, or if you're asplenic, which means you don't have a spleen or you're immunocompromised, then you run a higher, higher risk of really getting ill. In fact, if you're hospitalized with babesiosis over the age of 50, stats show it has a 2 to 9% mortality. That's because those individuals have increased more comorbidity. They have high blood pressure. They have diabetes. They have other issues that are wrong with them. So this is not something to just turn your head out. Yeah, it's rare, but it has increased. In 2020, in the state of New York, there were 6% of the cases were babesiosis out of all of the tick illnesses. And then a year later, it jumped up to 15%. And it's really making a lot of the headlines now. So what are you looking for with this? It has an incubation period of about one to six weeks. You don't get a rash, although some people have reported that. It, I have never seen it. I've had two cases of babesiosis in the last 15 years. So back to what we were talking about at the beginning. So let's do a hypothetical. You, your friend, you're hiking, you're camping, you get bit by a tick. About three weeks later, you're just feeling like crap and you have a Lyme rash and you get treated appropriately with Doxy for, let's say, three weeks. And you feel not bad. And then two or three weeks later, you're fatigued, you're wiped out. You have muscle aches. Your urine is dark. You need to bring that up to the provider and get a blood test for babesiosis. And it, yes, it can be diagnosed with a blood test. So that's really important to drive home here. And that's when the issue becomes a little complicated. So about 15 years ago, my first case, I diagnosed. And the reason why I diagnosed it is because I was learning about this. I went to a wilderness medicine conference and there were some awesome uh, presenters there, specialists on infectious disease, another one on tropical medicine, and it really brought it to my attention. 
And you know, when you get focused on something, you're looking for a new car, you start seeing that car that you want on the road, right? Well, same thing here. I started looking more specifically at individuals that were bitten by ticks. I treated the guy with Doxy, um, and we waited for the blood test to come back, and he had Lyme disease. He did not get better, and when he came back, then I did Ehrlichiosis, Babesiosis, and sure enough, he came back with Babesiosis. Got him treated accordingly, and he did great. So to my providers out there, that's what's important to know. So the treatment on this is macrolide with another medication. So you can do azithromycin, which is the z pack or you can do clindamycin, cleosin, with the uh, mepron, M-E-P-R-O-N, and the generic name of that, and I'm going to look at it, is atovaquone, A-T-O-V-A-Q-U-O-N-E. And that is an anti-malarial. Now, they're doing some work, and NPR just did a whole shtick on this this week, I think. They've been last week. They're working with a new anti-malarial drug, which has a really good outcome. However, it is pr approved for prophylaxis for malaria, but it is not approved for babesiosis yet. So who knows when that's going to happen. But they've done testing with mice, and they've had some really good results. And that is... A-R-A-K-O-D-A, -A -A. and that's the brand name. The generic name is Tafequin, T-A-F-E-Q-U-I-N-E, -E. and that medication, personally, I'm hoping by next year. Nevertheless, the issue here in summation is this. If you're 50 years old and older, and you get bit by a tick, you want, and you're in an area, I mean, if you're in Texas, however, I'm glad I said that. On East Texas, this year, they've noticed an increase in babesiosis. So if you're in Nebraska or Colorado or Wyoming, it's not an issue. You're in the Northeast, you're 50 years old and older, especially if you're immunocompromised or you have um, any issues at all medically, you want to be tested for babesiosis and Lyme. I'm here to tell you. So don't lose sight of that. Really important. All right, guys, I hope that is a good summation of the BCOs. If anything new arises on the horizon, I'm going to jump all over it. Keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind. Stay safe.